What's going on everybody? My name is Zach Hartley and in this video I'm going to walk you through how to use support and resistance lines to identify trading opportunities. Let's jump right in. Okay, so first of all, let's just talk about what is support and resistance and just keep it real simple. First of all, support and resistance are areas on the chart where the price tends to move in a certain direction. It is basically just a pattern where we are looking for certain areas on the chart where the stock price has moved in a certain direction previously and we would expect it to do that again. Now, why do the stock charts move? Why do the prices move? Why does the price go up and down? And that is based on buy and sell orders getting filled. The price of a stock is based on buy and sell orders getting matched up and executing the trade. And so what you have to think about is that if the price is going up, that is because there is an increase in demand and people are willing to pay more and more and more for a stock. Therefore, trades are getting executed at higher and higher prices. When a stock is going down, it means that less people are wanting to buy that stock, more people are wanting to sell that stock, and in order to get out of that position, they have to sell at lower and lower prices to hit the buy orders, get matched up with an order, and execute the trade. And so when there's tons of demand, the price goes up. When there's less demand and the supply is either steady or the supply increases, that's when you would see the prices go down. Now, support and resistance, basically when you try to look for it on the chart, you're basically looking for patterns where the price has bounced off certain price levels before, or where you can connect the lows of the price action. When I refer to price action, what I am talking about is the price moving up and down on the chart here from $93 down to $67. It moving up and down here is the price action that I'm referring to. And when we look at this chart, we can very clearly see that at $70 here, we tend to bounce off of this area. Now, one thing that's super important to notice and understand here is that when I look at this chart, I have drawn a line here right at $70, but the support or resistance on this chart is not at that line. It is plus or minus a couple of percent above and below that line. Support and resistance is an area. It is not a single specific price level that is just one pennies worth like that. It's not 1701. It's like 1720 to, to 1680 kind of thing. It is a band, it is an area, it is not one specific price level. And so when we look at this, we can see that we bounced off of $70 here in early 2021. We almost touched it again here in April of 2021. And then we came down and tested it again. And then we fell just slightly below it in April of 2022, but I would still consider this bouncing off of support because as you can see, we fell a couple of percent below that level, but we didn't have a complete breakdown of that support level. And so this was what I would consider a test of support. We tested again in October of 2022, and we've tested it several times since then as well. And so here we have a very clear example of $70 acting as support. And when I say that, I'm not referring to exactly $70, I'm referring to a couple of percent above and below $70. Now, why does this happen? Why does the price go up and down like that? Why do we form these certain areas where the price seems to bounce off or get rejected? And it's very simple. It goes back to what I said before. It is buy and sell orders. If there are no orders that are matching up where somebody is willing to buy and sell at the same price, then nothing is gonna happen. No trades are gonna get executed. And if somebody wants to get out of their position, they're gonna have to continuously drop their price in order to get out of it. And what you'll find here is that prices go up and down at to roughly the same levels until something else happens. And the reason that this happens is because when the price gets up here to $105, people start to think it's overvalued or it's too expensive. And so they take some profit and they offload some of their shares. And that action drives the price back down to the point where it's at $77. And now it starts to look cheap and it starts to look like a value play and people start to buy up the position. And this goes back and forth until it either breaks out of one of these support or resistance channels or until we have some major news and it gaps up or it gaps down. But the reason that this happens is because people think the stock is either too cheap or too expensive and therefore we bounce off of different levels. Now, one thing that you have to understand is that many companies will trade based on ratios. If it's a young startup company, it might trade on price to sales ratios. If it's an older company that's paying out a dividend, it might trade on a yield, it might trade on a price to earnings ratio. It could be anything and it sort of depends on the industry, but basically you have to think about it is, let's say I wanna buy Apple 
And I think Apple is a great deal at 10 times price to earnings, but I think it's a terrible deal at 16 times price to earnings. It's just too expensive at that point. And so what I would do is I would buy into the stock anytime the price came down to the point where it was trading at 10 times earnings. And then as the stock went back up, I would sell out when it became overvalued and hit that 16 times earnings. And that is what is happening here on these price charts is that people are looking at the stock and saying it's too expensive or it's too cheap. I'm going to buy or sell. And it tends to happen at roughly the same areas because people are trading on ratios. Now, another concept that you have to understand here is once we see either a breakout through resistance or a breakdown of support, that level then changes. It basically reverses. And here's a perfect example of that. We are looking at Telus Corporation in Canada. The stock has bounced off $26 three times right here. And then in May and June of this year, the stock traded below support. It broke down through support. It continuously traded below support. And then it came back up and it tested support. It got right back up to that $26 level and it got rejected. That is what we call the retest. And what this shows is that the support level that previously acted as support for the stock, it broke down and it then became support and then it re then rejected the stock and it fell even further. And so what you have to understand is that if a stock breaks down through support, that level then becomes resistance or if a stock breaks up above resistance, that level then becomes support. And what you are watching for is the retest. The stock will usually break out come back down and retest it. And if it bounces off support there, that would be confirmation of a bullish trend. Now, when it comes to these support and resistance lines, you have to understand that these can go both horizontally. That's what we would kind of call like a price level, like $80 just flat right here if the line went across. But a lot of the time what you'll see is that the price action of the stock price moving up and down here will actually form a channel that goes in a angle, basically goes up into the right or down into the right if you're in a bearish trend. And what you're doing here is you're identifying a channel that the stock is trading in or you're identifying a key level where the stock continues to bounce off of it. And the key here is that you wanna treat it just like the support and resistance levels that we looked at earlier. We've got resistance on the top, we've got support on the bottom here. If support breaks down, it then becomes resistance. And if we retest resistance and get rejected, that is confirmation of a bearish trend. Now, when it comes to drawing these trend lines, it's actually really simple. You just have to kind of start with the big picture, look at the largest time frame that you think is appropriate for the style of trading that you're doing, and look for the all-time highs, look for the all-time lows, and then try and identify patterns within it. So for example, here's Alibaba stock over the last few months. I'm just gonna click on the line button here and we are gonna start to draw some trend lines. And so here you can see, we have a very clear level of resistance right around 104, $105. And we also have a very clear level of support right down here, right around 77, maybe $80. You can see the stock bounced off of it in March, the stock bounced off again in June, and it looks like we are about to bounce off of it again. And so to draw these lines, all you are doing is trying to connect the highs of the price action or connect the lows of the price action. You wanna have at least two to give you that third one, and if you have three like this, it's even better. The more points that you can have that are bouncing off or getting rejected by that level, the stronger that level is and the longer you would expect it to continue. Now, the key here is once you have identified how to draw out these lines and you can draw these trend lines of support and resistance, once you can start to put them together, that's how you start to identify patterns for trading. And so here are a bunch of different patterns. And as you can see, they're all formed by identifying areas of support and resistance. And so you draw your trend lines, you figure out what pattern you're in and you execute the trade, and then you place your stop loss where the pattern breaks down. So if we were in this one right here, the bearish expanding triangle, where we've got resistance on the top, we have got support on the bottom here, and we are breaking down to the downside here. I would wanna get into this trade. I would go short when the support breaks down, and I would put my stop loss just above support so that if the price came back up into that channel, I would know that my trade is wrong, my hypothesis was wrong, and I would get out of that trade because I no longer have a game plan and what I was planning for doesn't make sense anymore. And so you wanna use your support and resistance lines to identify what's happening on the chart, 
And then you want to look at those lines and identify what pattern you have here. And that should give you an indication of where your entry point should be. And you feel free to use any of the patterns here. And if you are interested in learning more about how to actually execute the trade, then check out my stock market fundamentals course on Skillshare. It's totally free. It's only 10 hours long, so you can do it in a weekend. There's over 400 reviews that you can take a look at, and there's over 2.5 million minutes of watch time that have been spent on that course. I promise you, it'll be the best free resource that you can find online. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Good luck trading, good luck investing, and we'll talk to you soon.